Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jeremy Horn. I'm the head of data science here at Rocket Mill. And today I am really excited, not just to be on this stage for my Forefront debut, but because I'm here at Rocket Mill to build a brand new data science function. And when you're building or when you're embedding a brand new function within any organization, the most important first step, or one of the most important first steps, is education educating your team, your peers, your clients about what it is you're here to do, what you want to achieve. And that really is the focus of this talk today. So what is data science? Well, it's probably one of the most ill-defined phrases of the last 10 years. Lots and lots of companies say that they do data science. But if I put 10 of them in this room right now at the back, you would probably get 10 different definitions of what they think data science is. And so before we really talk about what data science is, I want to dispel a few of the myths about data science. Data science is not anything complex to do with numbers or mathematics. What I see a lot these days is organizations achieve a fantastic bit of insight from a piece of data. And then when you ask them how they got there, they say, oh, it's really complicated. It's data science, data science. Don't ask any more questions. Data science is also not machine learning. Machine learning is a valuable tool in a data scientist kit, but it is not the only tool that they use. And data science definitely isn't people standing around in lab coats looking at spreadsheets. So what the heck is it? What is data science? Perhaps the best place to start is with a Venn diagram. Yes, I know what you're all thinking. Spot the mathematician standing up here on stage. But this Venn diagram is actually one of the earliest pieces of information that came out in the data science field. And it looks at three areas of knowledge. So you've got mathematics and statistics on the left-hand side. You've got computer science on the right-hand side. And you've got business knowledge down at the bottom. And I think we all know that when we combine maths and stats with business knowledge, we get what you would call traditional analysis or research. And when you combine business knowledge and computer science, that's where software developers come in. And then combining the other two, yes, that dirty phrase, machine learning, it's there again. But what happens when you combine all three of these? You get this, what people call magical or mythical thing that is data science. And so data scientists like me often get confused with unicorns because we bring something crazy to the world. So we're still not any closer to a definition. Perhaps Dr. Google can help. Let's have a look. It doesn't really help. I've looked at Google, and the definitions of data science are vast, and none of them are that great, to be honest. This is perhaps the closest one. It comes from Wikipedia. And it focuses on three things. Data, the multidisciplinary, which is what we saw from that Venn diagram, and then knowledge. And to me, knowledge is the key thing when it comes to data science, or as I like to call it, Again, spot the mathematician, proof. If you did a maths degree, you sat and did tens and thousands of proofs to get to your degree. I'm probably the only one here that did that. But the idea is that any analyst can take a piece of data and get insight from it. A data scientist uses techniques to extract proof or evidence around what they're trying to achieve to build a conclusion. Unfortunately, we're still not really any closer to getting to a definition of data science. So perhaps let's look at the way that I'm planning to approach it here at Rocket Mill. What are we going to do? How are we going to make sure that we're just not increasing that population of data science unicorns? Well, it comes back to people. Rocket Mill is definitely people first marketing. And that is completely the same strategy when it comes to data and data science. We are here to understand people who the people are, who the customers are within a brand's data set, how they tick, what do they do, how do they interact with that brand. And we have five ways of doing it. Now, I've put it here into almost a cycle, but actually you can come in at any point of that cycle and start to understand more and more about the data that you hold. So we have got database strategy at the top, and I'll go in to talk about these one by one in a moment. Once you've got a strategy in place, you can start thinking about, OK, what does that data mean where your analysis comes in? You can start doing some really cool things with segmentation and creating smaller groups of your data. Once you've got it into groups, you can generate individual level insight with modeling and then take it full circle with media measurement. 
But just a little bit more about what all of those mean. So database strategy, it's really the place to start. A lot of companies nowadays are saying, I need a single source of the truth. I need one database to house all of my information. And it might have come about from a legacy effect. You might have your financials in one database. You might have your customer information in another database. You may have acquired a company at some point, and that gives you two or three extra databases. So it's merging it all into that single piece of information. But it's also thinking about how should I collect data? Why am I collecting this data? How do I do it? And at what point of the journey should I be collecting information from people? And how do I best engage with them to do that? And then the final thing is really streamlining data sets. And if I take an example of an e-commerce data set I worked with a couple of years back, and they're a global e-commerce company. And so they had transactions recorded in British pounds and US dollars and then local currency as well. But then they had transactions recorded with and without the discount and with and without the tax. And so you had about 20 fields to tell you how much somebody had paid. And the idea is, why collect 20 when you can collect one? So it's all about simplicity with your data. Once your data is organized, you can start doing some really cool things with it. So this is where the analysis comes in. And basic CRM analysis is finding out who is that person, who is the customer at the heart of my database. So what gender are they? What age are they? How do they interact with my brand? Now that interaction might be something really simple, like a web visit. It might be something a bit more complicated, like a purchase or multiple purchases. How do we differentiate high value customers from typical customers? Do they behave in a different way? And then the other thing that we're seeing a lot more people do now is how do we get smarter with free text data? Now what I mean by free text data is if you're a company and you have a call center or you have a survey that you send out to your customers, you gather a lot of valuable information from the call center transcript or from the survey response. And it's taking that and finding out what the words that people are saying really mean. What are they saying about your brand that tells you a little bit more about your brand that you didn't know? Once you've understood the data, you can start doing some even cooler things. You can do segmentation, yay! And by segmentation, it's taking your data set and putting it into smaller groups of data. So that might start with something relatively simple, which we call RFE, or Recency Frequency Value. And it's classifying your customers in three different ways. So the R, the recency bit, how recently have they interacted or purchased with your brand? The F, the frequency, how many times have they done this in the past? And the V, the value, which is how much they've spent, how much have you extracted from this individual person? And once you've got that segmentation, you can start to do some other cool segmentations involving crazy mathematics and clustering. There are books you can read if you are struggling to sleep at night. I'll, I can give them to you afterwards. But then you can look at other things above and beyond that and look at geodemographic segmentations or breakdowns. And that's where you look at classifying people based on not just where they live, but the richness of the area they live in. How big are their homes? How many people live in them? What's the annual income? What media is that household consuming? And so once you've created smaller groups of individuals, you can break it down even further and you can go to the individual level. So this is where we would do something like, we call it modeling. And this is where machine learning once again comes in. So machine learning here would generate individual or customer level insight. So it can tell you who's going to purchase over the next month or over the next three months. Who's most likely to purchase without a discount? Nowadays, we've all seen it. An email pops up in our inbox saying, here's 10% off, here's 20% off. If you're going to purchase anyway, that is a wasted email. That is lost revenue for a brand because you've effectively given somebody a cheaper purchase. Which customers have you got on your database that might show tendencies to become higher value? Can you put them onto some kind of crazy, we love you kind of marketing scheme that makes them become higher value quicker? And then the big one, direct mail, which we all know is really, really expensive. What can we do to try and streamline that? So rather than contacting 100% of the people, can we build a model that allows us to contact 20% and still get the same result? And then bringing that full circle, we can then get onto the market as a whole. So now that we've looked at individuals, let's look at the whole market. And we can do things like media measurement. So what's your ROI for each marketing channel? 
And that might be short-term ROI and long-term ROI. So all advertising will have a longer-term effect than the ROI you're getting just on day one or day two. Am I operating within diminishing returns? What is the optimal level of spend that I should be investing to my media campaigns by week? So as an example, if you're a travel brand, can you invest more in January when everyone's booking their holidays to the rest of the year when it might be a bit quieter? And then how could you distribute that amongst all of your media channels to get the best possible effect and the best possible return? That's quite a lot of theory and it's quite a lot of complexity around what data science is. So I just want to boil it down to two words. Really, it's all about problem solving. It's taking a client or a person's business challenge and applying all of the techniques that I've spoken about to come up with a solution and ultimately drive efficiencies. Now, as you've probably gathered, I could go on for days and days talking about data science, and I probably will at some other point in time. But I am going to leave it there for now. Thank you.